If there's one thing to take away from your time with Soma, it's that extinction is the rule. Survival is the exception. The impact event of 2103 proves that humanity isn't the exceptional survivor it makes itself out to be. And though the crew of Pathos 2 can vouch for this fact, it's the crew of the MS Curie who can attest firsthand. Following a short excursion to Site Lambda, Simon arrives at the wreck of the Curie in search of an escape vessel he can use to travel to Theta. The ship is a derelict, a towering obelisk standing silently amongst the graveyard of Detritus. Inside, is a labyrinthine series of quarters, catwalks, and corridors, all housing the waterlogged artifacts of the Curie's now-dead crew. Yet, strangely enough, all is not dead aboard the Curie. Many of the ship's computer terminals still glow with life, some displaying images and replaying audio logs which hint to the final days of the doomed vessel. How a ship, wrecked, flooded, and located many meters beneath the sea, can still maintain power is a mystery in and of itself. But it's the creature which haunts the halls of the Curie that is the real mystery. Did this creature, the Jiang Shi, have anything to do with the sinking of the Curie? What was the Curie exactly? And what became of its crew? Well, not much is known about the Curie. And what is, we ascertain from the words of Catherine Chun. Sorry, it's dead. Where's the shot? The CV came from Curie. It was a ship that used to make runs between Lambda and Lisbon. Looks like their wreck is close. Maybe you can find a vessel like this one inside. Sounds like a plan. According to Catherine, the ship was used by Pathos 2 staff to make runs between Lambda and Lisbon. A sign found on one of the few accessible decks Simon can explore indicates that the Curie was a heavy-duty, semi-submersible freighter. Semi-submersible. This explains its unique design. As you undoubtedly noticed, Parts of the Curie are arranged in a way that defies conventional logic. Ladders run adjacent to the floor, and stairs hang from the ceiling, resembling an industrial M.C. Escher nightmare. This design was done to accommodate for the Curie's rotating hull, since it's capable of reorientating itself 90 degrees. Though its exact purpose is never explored, it's safe to presume the Curie was used to transport cargo to and from a port in Lisbon. That cargo would likely have to do with the myriad of research projects Pathos 2 specialized in. Orbital launches, hydroculture, and deep sea construction, just to name a few. As for the crew, it would almost certainly consist of ancillary members of the Pathos 2 team, its own assortment of researchers and scientists, in addition to the expected maritime regulars. Perhaps some of the crew might have included members of the Omega staff. There's no way to know for sure, as this is pure speculation, but it's certainly a possibility. So, what happened to the Curie? Well, during its final voyage, the comet Telos crashed into Earth, causing destruction on a global scale. The Curie survived the impact by remaining submerged within the Atlantic. Whether it sustained any damage is unknown. However, I consider it unlikely as the ship's audio logs don't support such a claim. Shortly afterwards, the Curie surfaced to determine the extent of the destruction caused by Telos. When the ship arrived at the coast of Portugal, the crew witnessed the horror firsthand. surface and all terrestrial life have been wiped out, reduced to a smoldering hellscape. The Curie embarked on its return voyage home, but never made it to dock. Sometime afterwards, one of the Curie's escape vessels was ejected from the ship for unknown reasons, and the Curie itself eventually flooded. 
whether its crew perished before or after is indeterminable. And that's it. That's the sad story of the MS Curie, right? Perhaps. What if there's more to this tale than we initially believed? Consider that one audio log which stated that the ship was safe while submerged. This gives me the impression that it was likely unaffected by the initial comet impact. However, a document found in the Upsilon Comm Center confirms that there was also an aftershock slated to occur sometime afterwards. Perhaps the Curie sustained damage during this aftershock while en route back to Lambda. Now, could the damage sustained during the aftershock have resulted with the destruction of the Curie? Yes. Do I believe it's so? No. At least, not initially. Why, you ask? Well, perhaps I'll let Catherine pose a question of her own. Seems like the WoW was keeping the Curie from going into a catastrophic failure state. I, I mean, how did it get on the ship? Catherine asks what the WoW is doing on the Curie. I wondered the same thing. Perhaps the impact aftershock didn't result with the Curie flooding and sinking. Perhaps the Curie sustained enough damage that it was incapable of making a return trip to Lambda, and, as a result, the ship was forced to dock at the site that would ultimately be its grave. And then perhaps the WoW infiltrated the ship to prevent it from, as Catherine states, going into a catastrophic failure state. It makes sense, since it's at this point that the WoW had begun its mission to preserve human life, and it wouldn't make any sense for the WoW to attempt this if the crew of the Curie were already dead. Of course, the crew would be unaware of all of this. They almost certainly would have attempted to contact Lambda, or any responding Pathos 2 stations about a rescue, but the downed Lumars would have rendered this a moot effort. So, why not abandon the ship? Consider how close the wreckage of the Curie is to Lambda and its docking runway. We already know why the crew couldn't use the escape pods to abandon the Curie. The WoW. So why not just head to Lambda on foot? Well, I suspect that the Curie wasn't outfitted with the proper diving gear. Or perhaps, more realistically, the gear was located on another deck, one that was left inaccessible after the aftershock. Unlike the other Pathos 2 stations we explore, we never see any diving suits during our time in the Curie. I find it strange that there aren't any human remains found that is not a rib cage or a skull. Even the bodies found exposed to the ocean aren't so decayed that the remains have eroded down to just bone. So, what happened to the crew? Enter the Jiangxi. This creature appears as a bloated, nude humanoid with a bulbous head covered in bioluminescent growths. It is incredibly hostile, hunting using the most unconventional means. Unlike most predators, which stalk prey using specific senses, such as smell, sight, touch, or hearing, the Jiangxi uses proximity and, oddly enough, eye contact to track its prey. Should you look at it for too long or be within a certain radius of it, it will attack you. What it does to you after it attacks, however, is not explicitly shown. Though, I believe the creature's namesake may shed some light on what happens to its victims and what may have happened to the Curie's crew. The Jiangxi's wiki page states that the name originates from Chinese folklore, and that it is, quote, a type of reanimated corpse, end quote. It is also known as a Chinese hopping vampire or zombie. The hopping is an obvious allusion to the Jiangxi's ability to teleport short distances. However, to describe the Jiangxi as a vampire or even a zombie would infer that the creature devours its prey, at least partially. Some may consider this a stretch. I don't. If this is the case, then it would explain why the remains found within the Kiri are all skeletal. The Jiangxi entered the ship and devoured its crew. And, with its crew dead, the ship eventually succumbed to the elements and flooded. Admittedly, this theory doesn't cover all loose ends. I don't know why the Curie's escape vessel was found outside Lambda. There are no remains to be found near or within it, so perhaps it was ejected when the Curie was forced to dock. I really don't know. I do think that even if my interpretation of events is ultimately wrong, it still doesn't explain what the EV is doing detached from the Curie. It is a loose end either way. But what do you guys think? I'm curious to know. Could I just be wrong about everything? Perhaps the Curie and its crew actually didn't survive the aftershock. Maybe the ship just flooded, and those within simply drowned. If this is the case, I'm left with a number of burning questions. Why would the WoW bother with the Curie if there was no one left to save? What caused the EV to detach from the Curie in the first place? And why are the remains of the crew skeletal, 
when there are so many other bodies exposed to the ocean that are not? Perhaps not all questions mandate answers. Either way, the fate of the Curie and its crew remained the same. For over a year, the Curie stands undisturbed, a gunmetal monument to humanity. Then, in May 2104, Simon arrives seeking hope in sunken ruins. He boards the Curie, avoids the Jiangxi, and manages to destabilize the ship's reactor, allowing him to escape on one of the Curie's EVs. In the end, he puts the ghost of the Curie to rest as the reactor detonates, causing the ship to explode. Rest, however, is a luxury Simon is denied, as the resulting shockwave knocks his EV off course. He crash lands on a nearby plateau, drawing ever closer to an even worse horror. The horror from Delta 